Today is October 4th, 2024. My name is Nicodemus and welcome back to the Disruptive Technology Podcast, the show that keeps you ahead of the curve on cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, robotics, and all things cutting edge in technology. I'm your host, Nicodemus, and today we've got a lineup of intriguing stories that are making waves in the last 24 hours. From a staggering $56 million sale of a CryptoPunk NFT, signaling a possible resurgence in the NFT market, to PayPal executing its first business-to-business payment using its PYUSD stablecoin, the digital finance world is buzzing. We'll also dive into regulatory advancements as the Commodity Futures Trading Commission moves closer to embracing tokenized shares of money market funds. Plus, we'll discuss key leadership changes at Chainalysis and explore how geopolitical tensions are driving investors towards gold and Bitcoin. But first, let's talk about NFTs. A sign of the last crypto bull market just resurfaced. CryptoPunk NFT sold for $56.3 million. That marks a huge price jump, breaking the previous record of $23.7 million from 2022. The NFT, Punk1563, shows a pixelated woman with dark hair and blue eyes. The sale happened for 24,000 Ether. Just last month, that very same NFT was listed for less than 30 Ether, making this sale a staggering markup. Although NFTs have faded in popularity, replaced by a wave of meme coins, this sale tells me that there's still some interest. The motivations behind the purchase are not clear. Some past NFT sales, like a 2021 CryptoPunk deal technically worth $532 million, raised eyebrows with suspicions of money laundering. This massive sale brings back memories of the last bull run, even if the world has mostly moved on from quirky digital images. Transitioning from remarkable sales to regulatory movements, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission is moving closer to allowing tokenized shares of money market funds to enter trading. A subcommittee under the CFTC's Global Markets Advisory Committee has approved guidelines for the use of these tokenized funds. The guidelines will go to the full committee for a vote later this year. Now, while the specific recommendations have not been revealed, sending them to full committee marks an important step forward. Big names like BlackRock and Franklin Templeton could soon see their tokenized shares in play. BlackRock's USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund, or BIDL, is already a major player, becoming the largest tokenized treasury fund just six weeks after its March launch. By July, its market value surpassed $500 million. Now, BlackRock and Bloomberg are both members of the CFT's Global Markets Advisory Committee, and this indicates a close connection between the financial giants and regulatory discussions. The CFTC did not respond for a request to comment, leaving some questions unanswered. However, the momentum behind tokenized assets continues to grow in the digital space. Moving on to corporate developments, PayPal has made its first business-to-business payment using its US dollar peg stablecoin, PYUSD. The company paid an invoice to Ernst & Young using PYUSD, marking a major step in the push to showcase the use of digital currencies for commercial projects. The payment was processed using an enterprise-level digital currency hub, with the funds deposited directly into Ernst & Young's Coinbase account. Despite the excitement around this transaction, PYUSD is still far behind Tether's USDT and Circle's USDC in terms of market cap. PYUSD's market cap has dropped from $1 billion in August to around $716 million, while USDT and USDC maintain market caps in the tens of billions. PayPal has been actively working to expand its digital assets arm. It recently launched new partnerships and initiatives, seeking to boost the use of PYUSD. Recently, it announced plans to allow U.S. businesses to buy, sell, hold, and transfer cryptocurrencies. Stablecoins can provide faster, more flexible payments than traditional methods. This transaction demonstrates the potential of stablecoins in business-to-business payments, which can improve cash flow by enabling instant and round-the-clock transfers. Shifting focus to changes in leadership, let's talk about Michael Groniker. He's the co-founder and CEO of Chainalysis, at least for now. He has stepped back from his leadership role after a decade with the company. He's been on personal leave since September 25th for undisclosed reasons. Now, it's unclear if or when he will return. Chainalysis confirmed the leave, but provided no details. And Groniker has not responded to inquiries. Sari Granat is the company's president and COO, and she's going to be serving as the interim CEO. Granat joined Chainalysis in 2022 and has been involved in various aspects of the business. She's working closely with the co-founder, Jonathan Levin, who continues to oversee strategy. Now, this leadership shift comes after a challenging year for Chainalysis. The company laid off 150 employees last October. They retreated from the commercial market to focus more on government contracts, which make up about 70% of its revenue. Despite these challenges, Chainalysis was valued at $8.6 billion in 2022 after raising $170 million in a Series F funding round led by Singapore's GIC. Many are now wondering how Groniger's absence will impact the company's future. 
Turning to market dynamics, Binance's dominance in the crypto exchange world has been shrinking. A recent report by CC Data shows that Binance handled only 36.6% of spot and derivatives trading in September. Now, this is the worst result in four years, and it's lowest since September 2022. Spot trading took a big hit, dropping nearly 23% from August. This pushed Binance's spot market share to 27%, a low that's not been seen since January 2021. Binance's derivatives trading also fell, dropping 21% to a 40.7% market share. And that number is also the lowest since 2020. Now, while Binance struggles, others are gaining. Crypto.com saw its trading volume jump by 40% in just a month. It now holds 10.5% of the spot trading market. That's the biggest year-to-date gain among centralized exchanges. Overall, crypto trading slowed down last month. Both spot and derivatives volumes fell 17%, although analysts expect a rebound by year's end. Despite this, Binance's troubles are not just market-related. The exchange is under heavy regulatory pressure. The SEC recently filed a new complaint against Binance, accusing it of shady token listing practices. Binance's founder, Cheng Peng Zhao, was recently released after he pled guilty to Bank Secrecy Act violations and spent four months in prison. In legal crackdowns, Australian police have seized $6.4 million in cryptocurrency, targeting a secretive communications platform known as Ghost. The authorities allege that the platform was designed for the criminal underworld. The crypto seizure follows the arrest of J. G. Young Jun, a 32-year-old Sydney resident believed to be the mastermind behind the app. Another man, linked to distributing the app, has also been taken into custody. The seized funds have been transferred to secure AFP cryptocurrency storage, with authorities looking to permanently forfeit them. The bust is part of Operation Kraken, a global crackdown on the Ghost platform, but not related to the Kraken crypto exchange. Last month's raid involved 700 Australian federal police members, executing 93 search warrants. The operation ended up leading to 46 arrests, there were 50 life threats averted, and the drugs and illegal weapons were seized. The fight against encrypted criminal networks continues. Lastly, in the middle of growing geopolitical tensions and uncertainty, investors are turning to gold and Bitcoin. JP Morgan's latest report shows the rise of a, quote, debasement trade, where both assets gain favor. This shift stems from concerns about government deficits, high inflation, and ongoing conflicts. The U.S. election is further adding to the anxiety. Demand for Bitcoin futures on the CME has also surged, with contracts rising from 10,000 at the start of 2024 to over 40,000 by October. This spike suggests that hedge funds view Bitcoin and gold as similar safe haven assets. Retail investors are also taking notice, with Bitcoin exchange traded funds seeing renewed inflows in September after a dip in August. Over $20 billion has flowed into crypto ETFs this year alone. A potential Trump victory in the upcoming U.S. election could amplify this trend. Trump's promises to fire SEC Chairman Gary Gensler and make the U.S. a crypto hub could lead to even more support for Bitcoin. His policies could stoke geopolitical tensions and increase government spending, further driving investors toward assets like gold and Bitcoin. Have you heard the latest buzz in the world of money and mystery? A new HBO documentary claims to finally reveal the true identity of Bitcoin's elusive creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. If this discovery is accepted by the public, it could shape up global financial markets and even influence the upcoming U.S. presidential election. Why? Well, because Bitcoin has strong supporters, including former President Donald Trump, who has gained backing from Bitcoin enthusiasts. The documentary was directed by Emmy-nominated Colin Hoback, and it is set to premiere next Wednesday. Hoback is known for his previous work on covering the authors behind the QAnon conspiracy theory. This new film, entitled Money Electric the Bitcoin Mystery, intends to solve one of the biggest puzzles in the digital world. After all, Bitcoin has become a major player since it started in 2009. People use Bitcoin for various reasons. Some see it as a safe place to store value, others invest in it, hoping to make money, and unfortunately some use it for illegal activities. With the support of big names like Elon Musk, Bitcoin's value has soared to over a trillion dollars. Even central banks are starting to pay attention, seeing Bitcoin as a potential rival to traditional money systems. But if Satoshi Nakamoto's identity is revealed, it could lead to serious questions about his involvement in any crimes linked to Bitcoin. Estimates suggest that Satoshi owns about 1.1 million Bitcoin. That potentially makes him one of the richest people in the world with a net value of around $66 billion. As the documentary's release approaches, some old Bitcoin wallets that have been inactive since 2009 are suddenly becoming active again. Recently, about 250 Bitcoin, worth about $15 million, were moved from one of these long dormant wallets, hinting at Satoshi, or early collaborators, might be stirring things up just before the film starts. Despite many attempts over the years to uncover who Satoshi really is, the mystery remains unsolved. Previous claims, like that of Australian cryptographer Craig Wright, have been debunked, leaving the community skeptical and protective over Satoshi's anonymity. Many believe that revealing Satoshi's identity could be dangerous and undermine the very foundation of Bitcoin. 
So why does it matter who Satoshi Nakamoto really is? Understanding who holds such a massive amount of Bitcoin could influence how the cryptocurrency is used and regulated in the future. It raises questions about controlling the potential impact on the global financial system. As the documentary Money Electric the Bitcoin Mystery prepares to air, all eyes will be on whether it can truly solve the Satoshi Enigma. This revelation could change the landscape of digital money and power forever. Stay tuned because the truth about Bitcoin's creator might just be unveiled soon and the effects could ripple across the world in ways we never imagined. That's going to do it for today's episode. Now we've explored some groundbreaking developments from record-setting NFT sales and PayPal's foray into stablecoin transactions to shifts in the crypto market dynamics and the evolving landscape of digital asset regulation. As we witness these rapid changes, one thing is clear. Technology continues to disrupt and redefine our world in unprecedented ways. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe and share it with friends who are just as passionate about the future as you are. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.